We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Laurenburg, North Carolina. We get to visit with Bob Curtin, the head football coach for the St. Andrews Knights. Coach, it's always a privilege to get to visit with you and, and have you here on the channel as well. I, I would look back just a little bit at last year, 0-10. Uh, obviously, results, not what you wanted for a season. When you look back on something like that, I, I ask the question sometimes about, you know, what transfers, what carries over, if it's even a small winning streak or, you know, uh, didn't end the season the way you wanted it to. What do you take away from last year? You know, I first of all, as coach, if, number one, thank you for having me. Thank you for, you know, highlighting St. Andrews University and our football program. We're getting ready to go into our, you know, our eighth season. So it's um, we're excited about the future. Um, but when we look back at last year, there's a couple of things that, you know, I focus in on with, with the coaching staff and it's, you know, how do we build on the successes, you know, as few or as many as uh, they have been, how do we build on that? And for those things that where we struggle or, or a bit challenged, you know, putting points on the board, uh, you know, blocking for our quarterback, um, you know, stopping people on third and short, third and long, you know, getting out, getting out on three downs and out. Um, how do we get better at those things? And uh, so we did a real deep dive analysis, you know, and, and I really we, we made some some significant adjustments in the offseason. Um, we did some things this offseason that we have not done in the past. And I think uh, program wise, we really grew. You know, last year, you know, we were 0 and 10, 0 and 11 with the Davidson game, um, as you highlighted. But uh a couple of things that, you know, we looked forward at and we looked at and we really analyzed was the quality of our kids who, who were in our ranks and, and who was really bought in and who really wants to become, you know, a good football player, a great teammate and, and a great citizen, you know, in four years. And we're going to bring back 55 kids, 55 young men. I'm sorry that um, I didn't mean to call them kids, but 55 young men who have bought in. They are all in. Um, we had a great springtime, uh, spring season with them. We went out to Shaw University, and uh, which is a great D2 school here in North Carolina and a very tough conference. We had a great scrimmage against them. They were fantastic hosts. They were phenomenal uh, representatives of what you know college football looks like here in North Carolina, especially for us small schools. Mm -hmm. And we had a great showing. You know, um, obviously we didn't keep score, we, we, but we were able to highlight against an opponent what we did well. Uh, what we improved upon from the season and what we need to continue to work on. And, and we did those things. So that was, uh, you know, we really appreciate Shaw University for inviting us out there and doing those things. Um, the other things that we look at is when we look at the individual, why are we bringing back 55 and who are those 55? Well, here, here's just a small statistic that's very important to me. You know, my first year here, we, we lost 16 games through suspensions you know, because we couldn't maintain our calm. We couldn't maintain our cool. You know, we lost one last year, and, and, you know, and that and in the course of two two seasons, that's a huge, huge cultural shift. Absolutely. And I don't think there's enough attention being paid to that, um, you know, outside of the, the program. And I'm okay with that. Me and our, the coaches and us, we all know, and the, the players know. So that's one thing. The other thing is when we took over, we had roughly a 2.01 GPA, team GPA. You know, and each and every one of the semesters that we've been building this culture, we've been building this program and guys have been buying in and, and some guys have been leaving because it's not the, the, the level of that dedication and level of involvement that they're required to make this a viable program of the future. It wasn't for them. But we just got our latest semester grades back and our G team GPA is a 3.0. And so when you go from a 2.01 to a 3.0 in seven semesters, you know, I, that leads me to believe we're doing the right things. Mm. Um, now, that is great. But at the end of the day, we're here to win football games. And, mm. and these young men come here to be winners. Uh, and so now they've showed that they're winners, you know, in the classroom. They've showed that they're winners with the way they carry themselves on and off the field. And we have done uh, eight huge projects in our community, you know, whether it be the homeless shelter, you know, where we go in and we do things for, for the people that are, you know, without homes, uh, Habitat for Humanity. We've been in soup kitchens with through the churches in, in our neighborhood. And, and then uh, obviously we've done a couple. My favorite is the 
all night runs. We did the, the ultra marathons so that we can raise money and awareness uh, for those in need. Now, now, I believe deep down inside, and this is where I think we're at a turning point, bringing back those 55 young men who've really bought into to using football as a vehicle for greatness. Um, we're going to start to see a turnaround on the field because when we went to Shaw, we finally saw the first glimmers of, wow, this is what a real college football team looks like, acts like, behaves like, smells like, whatever you want to say. Um, now, that being said, we still have a lot of things we got to clean up. We still got a lot of things that we got to do better. Um, but, you know, we've had two recruiting classes here. And, I, you know, I, I make no doubt about it. The first class that we recruited here, we saved about, uh, you know, about 50% of them. This freshman class is going to be sophomore now. We saved about 79% of them. And so we've got a small nucleus of really good young players. Our juniors and seniors that we inherited that have stayed the course, they are providing great leadership for us. And so now I start, I, I believe in my heart, the coaches believe this. I think our players believe this. We're now going to see a turning point. And, and I'll be honest with you. So last year was an incredible, there was a moment that was incredibly low. You know, we looked up to see the bottom floor. So you know, <laughs> one of our mantras this year is, okay, we have, you know, the land is flat. We are now at ground floor construction, and that's where we're building from. And our off-season weight program, our off-season speed school, and spring season has been phenomenal. And uh, so we've – obviously, we've we've made some adjustments on defense, you know, what we're going to run. And we've made some, some more adjustments on the offense. I've got um, – you know, we're bringing back Coach Trent Fredericks as our defensive coordinator – now he's got a year of experience under his belt. I think he's going to do fantastic. We bring Travis Scales. He played his college ball at Fayetteville State, been teaching and coaching for about nine years around North Carolina, and that's really good. We've got two new coaches coming in, from one from Charlotte and one from Lewisburg College. We bring in Coach Greg Fowler as our offensive coordinator. And, uh, you know, he's been coaching. He's coached here before. He's coached at UNC Pembroke. He's coached – in Florida and he's coached at high school in North Carolina. So I'm really excited. And he runs a kind of a style offense that I really want to run where I think we maximize intelligence and we maximize um, our athletes abilities. And so you know, when I go up against a Bethel with 205 pounds, I don't need to take on a 300 pound lineman. <laughs> uh, I can do it smartly and more efficiently. And I think that's what we're going to see. So I'm, I'm, we're excited that way. And then got a good recruiting class coming in. You know, we got we got a really good recruiting class coming in um, intellectually, athletically, and, and uh, I think um, you know, with regard to the way they view football and what it's going to do for them. Long answer for a short question. I apologize. No, that's that's all right. I I feel like I know the program so much better right now already. So I I appreciate that, Coach. You you talked about then you know the retention and what it means, and I would even say specifically. From this most recent class, you talked about uh, 79% retention on that because you're going to have freshmen coming back, and and there were a number of freshmen that saw time for you last year. Talk about the offensive side of the ball first, and uh, those those players with experience that may see a little more time now, and that you may be looking to on the offensive side of the ball. Yes, sir. We're going to bring back you know Juwan Lyons. Okay, he he wore number five and, and number two last year. Um, most people know him in, in our conferences, Cuddy, uh, but Juwan Lyons, uh, just a dynamic young man. You know, he's five, six, 140 pounds, he's shifty. We had him in a slot. We had him, you know, returning punch and kickoffs. Um, I really thought he could have, you know, had we had a better season, he would have been a strong candidate for, you know, all conference play. But he comes back to us now as a, you know, red shirt junior, lots of experience, uh, and now he's starting to take on that leadership role. You know, he's in our Knights of the Round Table. He's one of our our four leaders that are sitting at the Knights oh, of the Round Table. That is great. I love that. Sorry. Go ahead, Coach. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. So, um, so I'm really excited about seeing you know Juwan Lyons come back. Um, I'm I'm really excited about uh, Najir Seagraves, number 32. He was a very young running back that showed just flashes of brilliance in what he was able to accomplish in, in high school. Um, you know, we're also going to bring in, um, we're also bringing back Michael Suther, our tight end. Um, so, 
you know, he saw a lot of time toward the end of the season. Uh, you know, he's a 6'3", you know, 250-pound tight end, uh, you know, really can block and, and, and likes contact. So that's, that's really good. Um, and then uh, we'll see a revamped offensive line. You know, with Tyree Cummings coming back as a, as a starter last year on the offensive line, uh, so we'll anchor that side down. And um, you know, we're still going to be very run focused. We're going to run about fifty five percent of the time, sixty, and we're going to pass forty percent because we've got some great wide receivers coming back. And you know, we got Jameel Rice coming back. We, we bring uh, Scotland County's Caden Graves. Uh, he's he's transferred in, ran the entire spring with us. So we're excited about you know letting him turn it up at the college level. He transferred in from UNC Pembroke. And so we're excited uh, to see what he can do. Uh, and of course, you know, we have two returning quarterbacks now, you know, obviously we look, we, we, we lose Darius Holly. Uh, he graduates and, uh, but we bring in Dylan O'Banks. who saw a lot of time last year, uh, you know, as we tried to grow him in his first season here, he's really taken off. And we have Bladen Blake, uh, who we redshirted last year and he did amazing on, you know, he was a true freshman uh, we wanted a year in the weight room with him, uh, and now he really understands the system. So we, we're, we're starting out the year with two two quarterbacks that uh, you know at least know our system, uh, and then we, we've we went out and recruited quarterbacks that we think are going to just do exceptionally well in our system uh, for the future. We're visiting now with Bob Curtin here on the summit as we preview the 2024 college football season. And before I go any further, I. Do want to recognize we're, we're closing in on Memorial Day weekend. And, Coach, I, I want to say thank you. Some uh, Someone who has given nearly a quarter of a century in service to our country. And I know we, we're not recognizing you on Memorial Day. We want to do that right. on Veterans Day. But since it is that time of year, and I want to say thank you, I appreciate your service, and I appreciate what you uh, have done and what you mean to our country and, and me individually. I'm very thankful for, for your time. And in the, on the defensive side of the ball, Heath Lavarius Lewis comes back, uh, solid safety for you. You have some good linebackers coming back as well. Tell us about your defense. Uh, yes, sir. Um, we're, you know, we are really excited about um, the defense. This, this year we're bringing back you know, several incredible athletes. Um, you know, Heath Lavarius Lewis, again, Knights of the Round Table, young man. He's going to be one of our leaders on the defense, him and Josh Henderson, a linebacker. Um, but, you know, again, V, as we call him, V, you know, I, I believe, you know, had we a better team, he would have been an easy select for all conference first team honors. He got second team, but I like the fact because that burns a little fire in him. And, uh, you know, he's we saw that fire come out in him during spring ball, um, you know, just clean, aggressive desire to be the best that he can. And we've actually added – you know, Nigel Pierce, uh, we had him last year as number 13, but, you know, Nigel's another six foot two, you know, 220 pound, you know, 215 pound frame. And he comes down and fills that alley at strong safety, like a wrecking machine. And so those two in the backfield, um, you know, in the backside of things, we're really excited. I know coach Travis scales, our defensive backs coach is very excited about him. Um, uh, even though Nigel's coming, you know, he played defense in high school. We've moved him to offense, and now we're putting him back in his natural position with that huge athletic frame. And then uh, Josh Henderson and uh, Nick Henderson, no relationship, just got a lot of Henderson brothers around here. And, um, you know, Nick's another Scotland product, a local product, same with Josh, a North Carolina product, um, both at the inside. And we're really excited about them. Nick's a freshman. Josh is obviously, you know, a, you know going to be a, a redshirt junior. But Nick's coming back as a, a true sophomore, tons of time last year. And one of the good things that we do have is one of our defensive ends, John Brown. Uh, he's decided to go ahead and get his master's uh, of business here at the university, and he's going to go ahead and use that redshirt freshman year. So, you know, number 56, much akin to, to Lawrence Taylor. Uh, but uh, John Brown's coming back, and, uh, you know, he is, again, a, you know, one of those Knights of the Round Table guys and help us lead. He sets a great example. He's just a big, strong, quiet, athletic guy, does everything right in the classroom, in the, in the community. Um, and so we're excited about him. And then uh, I'd like to highlight one more guy, you know, uh, the, the linemen, they never get the, their just due, especially if you're a nose guard getting double teamed all the time. But we're going to bring in, you know, Irvin Gardner. Irv, big Irv is coming back. Uh, he, again, is also going to go ahead and use that, that – 
that red shirt year. So this will be his, you know, fifth year at the university, but his fourth year playing football for us. It, and he just took on a ton. I mean, he was, he was the defensive line, you know, you put Terrell Milligan, our young, young buck coming back uh, and John Brown at the end and Irv in the middle. But what I think tells the real story is these guys coming back for that extra year, you know, to an 0 and 10 program, they're seeing something, they're knowing that there's something to buy into. I'm hoping it's also about football, but I'm, I'm hoping it's also about being a great young man and, and setting themselves up for life. And, and I tell these guys, there's, there's nothing greater than, than to be able to lead, you know, to, to lead by example. The, the toughest always being leading your peers, of course, but now we got these guys going to do it on a football field. And so I think that's, that's a great telltale sign for that defensive uh, um, uh, unit, so to speak. I like your take on that, Coach. That I definitely do. Special teams, uh, you mentioned Joanna Lyons a little earlier on the offensive side of the ball. May see some time for you on the special team side, Anthony Robinson as well. Tell us a little bit about the, those who are going to come out in that the third portion of the, uh, of the team. Yeah, so, you know, it, special teams is so critical to our success. You know, when we looked back and we analyzed a lot of our offensive, defensive miscues, a lot of it was tied to our special teams last year and, you know, snaps that were airing, punts that never got off, dropped punt returns, all kinds of things. But two constants that came out, you know, Juwan Lyons was phenomenal back there. Even, you know, we tell a guy, if you just catch the punt, you catch the kickoff, you'll probably save 15 yards of the ball rolling past you and, you know, that whole mess. Uh, Juwan Lyons always looking to catch the ball and take off with it, you know, and uh, you know, never – you didn't have any knock on wood, never fumbled the ball on us or anything like that. Uh, at a minimum, he would safeguard the ball. So we're really looking forward to get him in. And then, you know, a, a slightly bigger uh, version would be Anthony Robinson. You know, Ant's about 5'10 and about 180, but that same innate ability to find the ball, pick up the ball, and, and make positive yards. And we also see him back there, uh, you know, him and, and Ty Washington Hunt as two guys that can get back there and give us positive gains in that special teams. Um, and, and really, you know, it gets your defense out of a hole, but it puts your offense on the right side of the field a lot of the times if you can flip that field. So we're excited about those guys right there. We really want to focus on all three facets of the game, you know, offense, defense, special teams. Um, and that's how our, our practice is broken down. You know, we spend 25 minutes, 30 minutes of a two-hour practice session on special teams each and every day, and we're going to get better, and we're going to build around those guys on special teams. Sounds like you're hitting the right direction there then, Coach. Your season gets underway week zero, if, if that's the proper terminology for it. I think it is. Week zero, yes. August 31st, and you're on the road for the first three games of the season, and two of them, Division II programs, in right there in region, so it should be interesting to, to play those out. On the road, August 31st at Erskine, and then the next weekend at Anderson, and then you get an NAI opponent after those two D2 opponents uh, with Cumberland. Go on the road to take on Cumberland on September the 14th. Tell us a little bit about your season openers. Yeah, our preseason schedule is tough. Um, you know, we're going to go down to Erskine, and, you know, for us, I think that's a really good matchup. Um, they're, they're a program that's, you know, sort of rebuilding themselves, uh, re-imaging themselves just like we are. Um, I think it's also a great opportunity for us to sort of, uh, my, my mind is it's sort of a recruiting, uh, regional recruiting battle as well, you know, um, so we're really excited that uh, the Erskine, you know, University of Erskine and the Erskine University and their staff has opted to play us uh, because I think it's going to be a really good game. It'll allow us to sh not travel too far and then we'll turn around and, you know, we'll go to Anderson. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, if you follow in, you know, I, I'm kind of a history nerd and, um, you know, I'm, I'm a deep, deep researcher. So I look into the backgrounds of everybody we're going to play and try to find strengths and weakness. When you look at Anderson, um, they are just a university that does everything, you know, first class. They do everything right. And uh, even though it's going to be their first game, uh, they are not going to. I don't think they're going to blink. They're not going to bat an eye. They've got a great head coach down there. Uh, Bobby Lamb, they got a great staff, much like Erskine. Um, and then they got that, you know, multi-million dollar complex, which has attracted some, some really, really good athletes. 
uh, pulled quite a few great, great Americans away from us all, all in, you know, legally, professionally and ethically. They didn't do anything unethical, but, you know, when you're looking at that million dollar complex down there, they, they're doing things right. So those are going to be two tough t- two games for us right out the gate. And then we go to Cumberland's, uh, you know, and so I think that's another, we didn't have a very good game against Cumberland's last year. Um, but I think, I think we'll be much, much more competitive with Cumberland's this year. And then, you know, then, then we get into, you know, there's, there's no break. Then we, then Bethel's at home. That's our home opener, you know? Uh, and, you know, they're, they're, they're a final four NAIA team. Uh, and then we head off to Lindsey Wilson, who's another, you know, another big NAIA powerhouse. Uh, I think they're both four and six in the country um, or four and eight in the country, something like that. But it, I don't ever want our guys to fear away from these challenges. I mean, that's why we're here. You know, I tell these, these great young guys, I'm like, Hey guys, you know, if you believe you are that kind of a football player, you are that caliber football player and you have these characteristics, these human characteristics and qualities that we desire here with our Knights creed, then these are the types of challenges we want here. And we want them, you know, in in a, in a forum where, you can learn, you can develop, you can grow. And so when it's time for you to head off to the real world and have to provide for your family and be a positive member of the community, those challenges are going to be second to, to none. They're not, going to, they're not going to affect you very deeply. Uh, and so um, now, we're, we're, you know, we're going to fight like hell when we play these t- this non-conference schedule. But uh, I'm much, much more excited about the way this spring went you know, the, the support we got from our administration, um, you know, our admissions team here has been phenomenal, you know, especially in lieu of the fact that, you know, the, the federal aid has been all jacked up this year. I, don't, I know all the universities are feeling it. You know, the federal aid money hasn't been doled out to the families until just recently. And so families are figuring out whether they can actually come or can't come and how they're going to do it. And, you know, uh, so we're really impressed with our admissions and finance team here at St. Andrews and, you know, nothing but good things to say. All right. Well, Coach, wow, I, I have learned so much about the, the program there at St. Andrews just in, in the visit today, and I, I appreciate your your answers, your encouragement, your detail, and your attention to detail and all of that. So we're going to be following the Knights along the way. Do love Knights of the Roundtable. Absolutely love that. Didn't mean to interrupt you. It just caught me off guard, and I thought that's fantastic. What a, what a way to uh, – Anyway, bring along the elite and just uh, bring them up like that. Uh, Coach Bob Curtin here on the Summit, thank you so much, sir, for taking time for us. I said we'll follow the Knights this season. We will, and we look forward to getting to visit with you again sometime, hopefully soon in that. Success to you all this year, and thank you again. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the time.